just be politicians, be preachers. Uh, yeah. Be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions, be truth seekers. Be students, be teachers, be politicians, be preachers. Be, preachers. Yeah. be believers, be leaders, be astronauts, be champions. Standing in the hall of fame. Hall of Fame and the world will know your name. Once you hear the song by the script and Will I Am, you know it's time for personality profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. Good evening, Ghana. My name is Lexus Bill. Another Thursday evening affords us the opportunity to have a great conversation with people who are influential. And this evening, I've got one great personality like that for you. Yep, the past couple of months, you know, have been very interesting on our political scene. Uh, Parliament especially has been a spectacle. And the next four years uh, are shipping up to deliver the, probably the most interesting session in our fourth republic. Now, whilst our lens were scanning the composition of the eighth parliament, we couldn't help but notice some amazing young woman who dared to dream and most importantly, saw the dream manifest. A few of them broke any unspoken rules of age or gender. That's if there were any, you know. They demonstrated that when what you set out to do and what you set your mind to conceive, you can achieve. In 2016, when she was elected, my guest was the youngest parliamentarian of the Fourth Republic. Then she was 23 years old. And she's been re-elected to Parliament. She's still the youngest member of the Parliament now. Um, what did the 27-year-old member of parliament do so well that the people of Quabre East constituency decided to give her a second term? Plus, we'll get to know what drives this affable and industrious lady in her quest to serve the motherland. Well, help me welcome the member of parliament for Quabre East constituency, Honorable Francisca oting -Minza. Hello! Hello. I'm so elated to see you. How are you? Same here. And you're looking good <laughs> and well. Thank you. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you know, I'd wanted to have a conversation with you four years ago when you were elected, you know? Oh, really? Yeah, and I was like, okay, let's just wait a little bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Probably around this time, the jitters were there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They I were there, huh? They were. Oh, but I'm, now it's gone. Are you sure? Uh, are they? Yeah. They're still there? Yeah. Are you serious? Yes. Oh my it's, goodness! Uh, I mean, it's 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 part of life, and it's it's part of the game. Yeah. yeah I mean, you should always expect it. Wow. Yeah. I mean, anyway, but let, let, we'll get there. <laughs> but let me say congratulations Thank again you. Thank you. Um, Thank on you. your re-election to Parliament. I'm sure Thank you be, you. you're elated that you're back in the chamber. Um. Yes, I am. I am. Um. Especially when I know I could. Um. You know, I had a target that I wanted to achieve. Yeah. I would say I managed to achieve part of it, but okay. then um, I'm not truly satisfied. Um, that is to make sure it comes to 100% completion. Okay. And that's exactly what I'm doing. So the 8th Parliament was inaugurated a couple of weeks back. Um, is it any different from the 7th Parliament? <laughs> <laughs> from where you sit? <laughs> oh, of course. I mean, the, the 7th Parliament was, um, was solemn was peaceful hey. was um i mean quick uh -huh. um, we got to the house i quite remember i was new so a lot of things were quite fresh for okay. me i had to be in the house as uh, be in the chamber i mean as early as 10 where we we're supposed to be there like 12 oh, or okay. less 11 but okay. i was there like two hours before Earlier. time Eish. you know and i think by one o'clock we were done okay you know and then we went back to prepare for the president's swearing in but um <laughs> <laughs> this one is totally different <laughs> the eighth parliament i mean that's that's a whole mood that's a whole drama a whole yeah. um i mean it's, it was something different i felt like um because i experienced it 
in the seventh parliament, everything would be, you know, that yeah. smooth. But then I called there, and then um, <laughs> surprisingly, we, I mean, we saw a lot of surprises coming yeah. in, a lot of drama, um, you know, a lot of heat, a lot of. Uh, I mean, what everything. role did you what role did you play <laughs> on the night? Don't don't make it look like everything that happened was you know. For me, you, you probably played a role. What what, what role did you play? Did you, were you cheering and jeering and shouting? <laughs> well, I mean, um, <laughs> at the initial stages, um, that was when we got to the chamber, and then um, our seat was taken by the minority side. I mean, mm. I I was quite surprised. Okay, that. Um, and I was part of the f the group that actually got there earlier. Okay. And I mean, everybody was just surprised. Did, and you, did you go to your seat, your regular seat? I did, and I checked who was sitting there. Who was and it? <laughs> I don't even remember. <laughs> you know, then what did you quickly, tell him? I was like, "What are you people doing here?" <laughs> <laughs> Then it was like, go and find another seat. You, you know. Did, you, did, you, did, you didn't sit on him. <laughs> you know. As <laughs> I think at that moment we got a directive from our leadership that that's okay. We should just move to um, the minority side just for us to, you know, they at a point and they wanted us to be a bit relaxed, okay, a bit um, not too aggressive, okay. so that we can at least get away with this and then swear the president in. Yeah. So a lot of things that went on. I think we had to compromise okay. because we wanted yeah. the president to be sworn in um, within the the stipulated date. Let me take you back to four years ago when you were first elected to parliament and there was actually big news. I mean, 23-year-old um, university student winning uh, the Quabre East constituency. And at the time, actually, I think you polled the biggest results nationwide. Uh, about 83% or someone of the sort uh, voted for you. Yeah. Um, we saw it as a big deal. For you, was it a big deal? It was. It was for um, a constituency like Quabre East um in even though it is an mpp stronghold but then for a youngster and a fresh person in in politics for them to have given me that massive number of votes was quite impressive mm -hmm. and i felt it was um, it was challenging as well right because then it means that you have about 83 percent of your constituents expecting this and that from you yeah and so with that you have to work hard mm. you, you if somebody is working hard you have to work harder exactly you know so it was it was a challenge for me and then it was something that i think i i put myself into it and i must say i i really enjoyed the four year right. you know tenure as a member of parliament so you got elected you know congratulations celebrations whatnot um you get into parliament i want that experience i'm sure a few <laughs> members of parliament were as old as your father yeah. uh, were you treated like a young lady did your colleagues uh, see you as a co-equal take us back to that feeling that that treatment that those first days in parliament <laughs> well um those first days in parliament i think um personally i felt that it was a learning process for me and so i was more relaxed to learn to be i mean if you want to learn something from someone, you definitely have to, you know, humble yourself, mm -hmm. you know, acquire the necessary skills and knowledge that you need and then explore it. So um, at that point in time, in as much as we are all colleagues, I mean, some of them are like my father, some yeah. of them are like my mother's um, uncles. And I felt that I still have to give them that respect. However, when it comes to the job and we are all sharing ideas, we are making contributions, I give my contribution as and when it's needed. Mm. Even at committees, they, I've never had an encounter whereby I want to make a contribution and somebody will be like, no, no, you keep quiet. No, I've, I've never gone okay. through that before. Okay. No matter what you want to say, I mean, the chair will give you an opportunity to, to speak. Yeah. Yeah. You were never intimidated at any point? No, no. Probably if um, the intimidation maybe I, I felt was behind closed doors. Like, you know, some of our party gurus, some of them, you know, that kind of thing. But then in Which Parliament... Which kind of thing? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> the the why, statement was very why incomplete. Do you, why do you want me to go into... <laughs> oh, I, I'm just <laughs> trying to, you know, walk in your shoes you, a little you know, bit. You so, know, dear, dear, yeah. um, I quite remember when I was coming... 
and then i met some of our big men in the party you know i shared my um dreams with them that i want to contest for about um seven if it's 10 out of seven 10 out of seven of them told seven me out i'm of not 10, you mean? Seven, seven out of ten yeah. you know told me i wasn't going to succeed oh wow oh yeah and this is way before you even yeah contested. that was primary step you know yeah. before i contested so um did they tell you why because they felt that oh you are too young you are still in school i'm not sure your people will will listen to you and all that and you are inexperienced i'm not sure you are matured enough to handle a big constituency like that and and, and a whole lot of stuff wow. and you know so when how, how did I, that make you feel very bad I, I mean i was i was very bad mm. it it was very challenging for me um especially as a young girl mm -hmm. um you know people that you you've you know behind closed door you you see them as mentees yeah. you know sometimes you you know you've you've pictured in your mind that this person is my mentor but probably you've not had the opportunity to have that personal encounter with them and then these people that you think they are people that you're looking up to you go to them expecting some kind of motivation and they rather uh, shoot it down yeah i would be so heartbroken yeah it is so how did you pick yourself up from there? I mean, how did you tell yourself that I can still do this anyway? Or was it somebody who actually gingered you up or something? Uh, I think my my family has been very supportive. Um, my mom is not a political person. She she doesn't really like politics. Okay. I mean, she didn't really like the idea because she felt that politics is too deadly, it's too risky and all that. Mm -hmm. But my dad was very supportive mm -hmm. of, of my dream and he was very, um, I would say he, he was someone who was always encouraging me. He told me, oh, if you go and you, even if you lose, it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, the most important thing is that you've gone there, you've learned something and you can move on with that experience. And I think that that has been very encouraging. And then, of course, um, there's three people let me say that three percent out of the the ten uh, some of them had very strong words for me okay. and i think that also gingered me to do you recall to, the most powerful of those words i do i quite i quite remember someone one of them told me that he he first asked me is someone forcing you to do it then i said no then he said then go for it that's the most important if you have the dream the passion mm. for it go for it it comes with challenges but then if that is what you want don't think about what others are saying if someone had pushed you to go for this position that would have been a problem okay but if you are you yourself decided to take this bold decision it means something god is communicating something to you because wow. you wouldn't just be there and just get up and say i'm in school i i'm in my second year in the university and i'll say i want to contest my primary ship. so he felt that it's a communication mm -hmm. from maybe god or, or probably yeah. so i should go for it you know i would have asked this a little later but let me ask you now because i also wondered where it came from you know was it somebody who suggested to you that okay you can be a parliamentarian or you actually thought of it and said look i mean second year i mean i went to KNUSC as well in second year KNUSC, I, I was just <laughs> thinking of how to get to commercial area and back <laughs> you know but what what happened and you thought look I want to be a politician. I want to get into parliament. I'm going to contest the primaries for Quabre East. Um, Quabre, um, I'm from Mampontin, which is the municipal capital within Quabre East constituency. Um, because of the kind of job my dad, um, he does, he's mostly invited for programs. Um, sometimes the youth are having, you know, some activity and he's not able to go. Mm. Even as at um, senior high school, he could... He could tell me to represent him in those programs. No. Oh. Sometimes makes presentation on his behalf or maybe engage people on his behalf. Way back when I was in senior high school. Then I got an opportunity to meet with one of the constituency executives within the Quabri East constituency. So I followed her during one of her campaigns. Mm. And then I gave her, you know, when I met with her, she was going for a re-election. So she was campaigning. And... um. 
she told me to just be observing what is happening and then give her feedback whether or not she's likely to win. Okay. So I sat back, nobody knew me. I sat back, did this whole analysis, I engaged some people, and I did that, you know, quite a number of days. And I gave her the feedback. And true and behold, that was exactly what happened. She won. And those areas where it was extremely difficult, I told her that this particular community, mm. they are not really, they, you know, it's 50 50 for you. This place, you have a massive support. And through that, I got initially I still had the interest in in being a politician. Almost every friend of mine would tell you Francisca has always been dream of being a politician. Okay. So from that moment I think it it triggered it. Yeah. And so I started got getting involved in you know political activities within the constituency and from there she made me the patron of the women's wing wow. within the constituency. And, um, you know, through that, people, you know, started seeing um, what's in me. And mm -hmm. some of them even started walking to me that, oh, why don't you contest for mp mm -hmm. And then I also felt like, uh, with the way the constituency is, we need a new face. We need somebody who could help, you know, bring something up, something new within the constituency to turn the face of Kwabri's constituency. And, I mean... It's it's it started from wow. from there, yeah. So there was a burning. Everything passion. was quick. Everything was just. There's a burning passion to get it done, and you're like, look, I'm not gonna wait. No. I can do this. Exactly. I will do this. Yes. And you did it. Yes, because I mean, I don't know how long I'm going to live on Earth, and if I get any opportunity, I have to utilize it. Um, you don't say, oh, I want to wait till when I'm forty. What if you never get there? So the opportunity you get now, you utilize it. And even if you are no more, you leave a legacy. And that's the most important thing for me. Yours is an inspiration. And I'm sure a lot of people will take inspiration from your story tonight. Thank you. I'm grateful that you're sharing this. If you're just tuning in, you're live on Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. We're live on Facebook as well. This evening, I'm spending time with a member of parliament for the Quabri East constituency, Honorable Francisca Oting Mensa, who is the youngest parliamentarian we have in our eighth parliament. She's such an inspiration. I love her. And you can send in your comments as well on our WhatsApp platform, 55 If you have questions you'd want to ask her, and also on our Facebook stream, uh, which is live, you can join in there, okay? Um, we'll talk more about Parliament, but I'm, I'm, I really want to get to know you a lot more. I know your father is also very popular. Uh, <laughs> he even owns a media conglomerate, uh, <laughs> CEO of the angel group of companies, Dr. Quick Quoting. Yeah. Share with me a bit of your growing up and your childhood <laughs> wow um you know sometimes people think maybe i was born with a silver spoon was it gold or maybe a golden <laughs> spoon <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure which spoon i came with uh, definitely it's but not you gold. With a spoon. <laughs> and, uh, probably maybe <laughs> i don't know which spoon but then but I, there was I, a spoon I, i'm not sure yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, my dad was um, was a carpenter. Okay. Yes, he he was he was a trained carpenter, and um, doing his business at the Mamponte, and from there he got the dream of you know going into um, herbal medicine. Life was very challenging, I must say. Um, there are times where. Um, when my dad started his herbal medicine at the initial stage, you know, Ghana, when you start something fresh, you need time. People, you know, get so used to other products. And so, yeah. you know, having a U-turn on a new product becomes very difficult. And there were times where we have to wait for him to go and sell the angel soap. As at that time it was, he started with the angel soap. He went and start, he went and sell some of the angel soap. Then my mom will have to work from Bermai to Kegetia. Mm to take money and come and cook for us before we are able to get food to eat. Wow. Yeah, very challenging. There were instances where my dad used to take some of his products on trek, as it, they say, maybe to Seshi mm. or any part of, you know, Ghana, and then he would, he would send money through the next coming car. And so if something just happens, then it means no money. Uh, I mean, life was extremely tough. Wow. Yes. 
it's 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 not so cozy as people think mm. people always feel like oh francesca she's from a rich home and it's not so it didn't start that way not at all not at all i quite remember when i was i was young um and there was a guy who used to live with us but then he stayed in um quite a distance about um one kilometer away from our house and you know they start preparing this medicine at dawn and I quite remember I have to wake up. My dad would come and wake me up as early as four AM, travel through the night and go and call the guy to come and help him, yeah. you know, um, you know, um, prepare. The prepare soap and all yes. The and you can imagine four AM walking through the night. Yeah. There was no phone. Even if there there was phone, but then can you afford it? Yeah. And <laughs> it was it was tough, I must say. It was tough. Uh, I mean, a, a lot of memories sometimes I don't really want to recall. Uh, 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 forgive me, but I'd want you to recall one of them. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I'm, I'm trying to relate to the stories. And um, if you can paint one of those pictures for me, tough at this, as it may be, I mean. Um, I quite, one of them, I quite remember there was one Christmas. I mean, now Christmas, you don't really see kids saying, oh, I want my Christmas dress and all that. Um, those days, <laughs> but getting a Christmas dress for your child was was a big ish. Yeah. Then you get your watch and your spectacles and <laughs> then you know that indeed I'm spending Christmas. And your socks that you <laughs> come over. <laughs> and your book. <laughs> yeah. You know, I quite remember there was one particular Christmas we had to fall on my grandmother to buy us um, um, a Christmas dress. dress. Um, my mom, sometimes when she's going for a funeral, she has to go for her mom's dress. And then probably, you know, and because it's big, mm. she has to carry my little sister behind her so that nobody even see that the dress is big. Because wow. once you cover her with your cloth. cloth, you wouldn't see the size of the dress in mm. a way. I mean, it's... <laughs> Indeed, life was tough. Very. But you watched it transform. Yes. I think um, my other sisters didn't really experience it, but then I did. Uh, you, mm. Are you the first one? I'm, I'm the first one. Of how many? We are four. You're four. Yeah. Okay. So you, you had to face life the hard way. Yeah. And I'm sure by the time they came in, things were things a little were, better, isn't it? Yeah, it was it was way, way better. I think Sheila, my my um one right after me, yeah. she experienced a bit, a of, bit it, of it. But then I, I did most of it. I understand you actually attended about three basic schools for primary education. Yeah. How, um, how's that? Sometimes you have issues with school fees. And, you know, you have, the arrears may be too much that you have to find a way of getting to another school. Oh, and that's then what happened? It's, it's one. And okay. then one other thing is, um, you know, sometimes you have issues with rent, issues with landlords. And so once you change location, you have to change your school. I had that problem. So I quite remember when um, there was a time we moved to, there was a school I attended in Mampontain. Then mm. we moved from there. Um, to Mosizongo, then from Mosizongo we moved to Bremai. Bremai we stayed in two different locations, and then to Kronom. So anytime we move, there is a change of school. Yeah. And that was. It wasn't like we are moving because it's it, it pleasant. No. It wasn't. It wasn't probably. You know, you have issues with your landlords. The rent is going high, and you can't afford it. And you have to go to yeah. a much lesser place just to. Wow. Yeah. So at what point did things turn around for the family? Um, I think um, when I was about 12 or 10. Okay. What I happened? Um, the, um, the herbal medicine started going on well. And, um, you know, things started picking up. So Do you recall the first item of pleasure you got or, the, or that you got for the family? Or one of the moments you actually thought, oh, man, this is life. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I quite, I think one of them has to be my first time in Accra. Oh. Yes. I, I didn't really get to Accra. I got to Amasamai. <laughs> 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 but that was Accra for me anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, was, it, was it like a, a getaway, a family uh, getaway? No, I mean, um, a fa uh, my, my, my uncle was, was, um, being ordained as a pastor. Okay. 
and the place was um the church was in Amasamai. Right. So we traveling all the way to Amasamai was uh, something you know uh, memorable. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, another thing was I quite remember when we did the family um vacation to Barikese. That's right. Those those were those days. Those were the days. <laughs> that, that was a treat for you. <laughs> Regards to all those living in Amasaman. <laughs> Francisca and the family came for a whole vacation in Amasaman. <laughs> Must be nice. <laughs> That's quite interesting. Yeah. And and, and, and and I'm sure you picked up some positive traits from daddy, you know, looking at the faces of life he had to go through. And now I can say that he's probably one of the wealthiest men in Ghana. He's got a group of companies. He's got a angel fm and, and and all of that i i remember back in kumasi there was angel fm yeah uh in, in kumasi yeah. back in the day uh with my brother um kwami adin kra yes. working there for a little bit and all yeah. of that so i knew about i knew about dr Oting and all of that and and now you, you see that the life has totally changed things yeah. are totally better so you know witnessing all of these firsthand what are those lessons you picked up um i think one one lesson that i picked up is perseverance um we were determined and we all had to sacrifice one thing or the other for us to get to this stage mm. um for instance we had to to sacrifice our comfort as a child growing up and you expect your parents to be you know buying you toys and all so sometimes when i meet some of my friends and they are talking about cartoons I don't even know anything about <laughs> it. <laughs> wow. You know, I don't really know anything about cartoons. Um, you know, somebody's like, I quite remember when Lion King came. They said there's this, some time ago there was another. I was like, really? <laughs> there was I'm, another Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I never got those opportunities. Yeah. I mean, there were those times where you don't even have TV in your room and you have to be peeping through somebody's door. Mm. You know, I felt like we all had to sacrifice our comfort for mm. us to get to this stage. And apart from that, too, we persevering is when, you know, my dad was into carpentry. He, mm -hmm. had, his, he had started something which was moving on very well. Then all of a sudden he's like, um, I don't have the passion for carpentry. I want to start something fresh. I mean, you know that the carpentry work, in as much as you don't get money coming in, like, but then it's better off than yeah. than just being there. So yeah. for him to have made that decision that I want to stop carpentry and then go into this mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. it was it was challenging for us, especially in an environment where, you know, it takes time for you to penetrate the market. Yeah. And so... <laughs> With time, we we all we we managed to get there, and that family togetherness yeah. also helped. Awesome. I mean, at a point in time, we were the ones doing the the cream and soap ourselves. So oh. I know how to do the angel cream. I know how to do the angel soap, Patrick all the uh, all the product because oh. we are doing it in the house. Yeah, there were instances where we we the the suspender that because we couldn't produce it in high quantity. So the suspender that we used to prepare the the cream or the soap. It's the same suspense we cook from. So sometimes we have to wait till we finish producing the medicine and wash the suspense and cook. Wow. Yes. So all these things, you know, happening and then, uh, I mean, we are here. I think. Have you, have you ever heard anybody say you're a dada B? I do, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and what what comes to mind when they say that? I just say, wow, well, these people, they don't know what they are saying. Yeah. They don't, they don't. And um, probably they, they, they don't, re people who know us know how far we've been yeah. and what we've gone through for us to get there. But people who don't, they always feel like, oh, she's lying. I mean, this girl, she was born with a silver spoon and yeah. they feel like everything is all cool and cozy, but... That is not the case at all. Amazing. Uh, you studied law at KNUST. In actual fact, in your second year, yeah. that's when you decided to contest the primaries yeah. um, for Quabri East yes. constituency. How did you <laughs> juggle that? Because KNUST stuff and studying law and doing this was quite a daunting task. It was. Um, it was very challenging. 
especially the most challenging part was when um i had to when i won my primaries and i had to be doing the general campaigning for the general election mm -hmm. it was very tough because um you know sometimes i have to rush my constituency is not so far from from Kumasi. Mm -hmm. So so sometimes I have to rush out of lecture room and go and campaign maybe for two hours and come back and continue with lecture. Mm -hmm. There are times where I have to miss the whole day. Um, there are instances where it turns to two weeks mm -hmm. where I'm not able to go for lectures. But I had very supportive friends who sometimes they record the, the lecture and then send okay. it to me and as I'm there, I will listen. It was were very you difficult. Were you a shark? Um, would Be I say I'm a shark? yourself and with us. <laughs> were you a shark? Who is a shark? Uh, oh, I mean, come on. You know what I'm talking about. Because I don't if you know. don't be shark, how? You, you don't have come lectures. They record lecture for you. Uh, were, were you were you a shark? I, I okay. Mean, I, I, was, I was... One to ten. One to ten. What would you be? I'm, I'm a more than average student. So I, I should put it that way. Seven. Kind of. Eight. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> so I um. Did, did you trail any paper? No. I, wow. Yeah, I didn't trail any paper in hey. my four years. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you? <laughs> May that say. <laughs> May that say. So that was it, and I quite remember there were those days when I'm um, doing wake up of what they learned and. I'm landing on the bed, and by the time I realize I'm I'm asleep, and yeah. my books are all over me, and I get up. Sometimes when I don't have lecture in the morning, I rush to the constituency, mm -hmm. and then campaign and come back. You know, it was it was a whole stress mood. Okay. And at a point in time, it got a bit um, it got a bit discouraging, especially when um people that was you know I quite remember during the primaries era. Those people who came to me, they are like, oh, we think you should contest because you are capable of doing this and that. When they got to know of my age, most mm. of them started drawing back. Ooh. Yes. And so that message had gone down to the electorate or the, the citizens within yeah. Kwabi East constituency. And so one of the major challenges for me um, during my campaign was for me to convince them that at this age, I think I am capable. Mm. It doesn't matter my age. I am I, I'm, I'm matured enough yeah. to handle the affairs of Kwabri. And that was a huge challenge. Every platform I get to, I have to, you know, sing that message. Yeah. And um, it, was, it was tough. It was tough. And then also being in a constituency which is being run by um, experienced politicians. Mm -hmm the constituency chairman, the secretaries and all that. You know, sometimes you are going for election and you are not getting the support of some of these people when they, you've won, even though you've won, they still want to sabotage you. I had that challenge. Ah. Yes, I did. And I quite remember there were times where you you want to plan, you plan for a program and you go and none of your executives, only maybe just a few will show up. Mm. Yeah, only just a few will just show up. And, uh, you know, the sabotage was yeah. there. I, I've spoken to a lot of parliamentarians, and they'll tell you that, Alexis, it's, it's a very expensive venture. Um, some will tell you that even before the primaries, you'd have to find money for almost all your <laughs> uh, <laughs> delegates. Yeah. Uh, was it expensive for you? Um, it was. I am. But um, expensive is relative. Um, relative in a sense that um, it depends on what exactly your activities are within the constituency. Um, it is expensive at the initial stage because then you are trying to send a message to get people along with you. Um, at the initial stages, you have to find ways and means of sponsoring your own campaign and then also... Um, you know, um, sponsoring your, you know, your transportation. And, you know, campaign is not just about giving money to people. Mm -hmm. It's about transportation, feeding of your members, um, some motivation, media, you know, a whole lot of things yeah. involves, you know, campaign. And I was very fortunate um, at the initial stages, I didn't really get the support. 
But when it was getting to the latter part and people started believing in me, I started getting sponsorship from people. Okay. Sometimes you'd be there and somebody would be like, oh, I want to do t-shirts for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to do your posters. I want to do this for you. So it depends on, on uh, like I said, it's relative. It depends on how you are able to carry some people along and those same people will, will, will help you okay. when the time gets there. Now, now let's, let's fast forward to now you're in parliament. You've been elected. Your people now expect you to work. Tell me about the work of being the representative of the people of Quabra East. What did you have to do? And how did you do it? Um, being a parliamentarian is, I would say, it's a two-side job. One is at the constituency level and one is in parliament. At the constituency level... Um, that's where you have to engage your electorate and then also engage the citizens. The mm. electorate are, I'll say, the delegates, if I should put it that way, and and then the the citizens of Kwabri. Um, You know, you have to also make sure you are able to represent their ideas, their views in mm. Parliament. Um, you have to, you know, look through, do a lot of um, engagement with opinion leaders and get to know some of the challenges they are going through within the community and see how best you can use your office to to resolve those issues. And the other part has to do with working in parliament. That is you being your people's representative, Mm. um, representing them in parliament. That means you are the voice of of, Mm. of Quabri. You are the voice of the people within your constituency. And so whatever decision you are taking, you need to make sure it 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 has a picture of of your people's views yeah. and apart from that you are also serving Ghana mm-hmm. um in as much as you are you are there representing your people you are serving the interests of Ghana you are serving to make sure that everything within the country is right is proper everything is done within um um the laws of the state and mm-hmm. and that's that's basically what's and being a member of parliament. If you're just tuning in, this is Personality Profile here on Joy 99.7 FM. And I have a very amazing guest today. I'm totally excited about this conversation I'm having with the member of parliament for Quabra East Constituency, Honorable Francisco Tingmensa, who is the youngest member of parliament we have now. Uh, she was four years ago and she still is. Uh, <laughs> until my daughter, you know, takes her out. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for her to be there. <laughs> you know, if you have any questions for her, you can send us a WhatsApp message on 55 You can send a message to that number and would uh, read your message there. We are live on Facebook as well, so you can join in on Facebook. If there was one thing, or well, probably there are a lot more, but tell me about the successes over the four years that you chalked what were you able to do for the people of Quabra East? Um, very fortunately for me, I was able to do a lot. Um, I I got the support of, um, I'll say, majority of the opinion leaders. Okay. And so they were able to guide me through some of the concerns of the people. Um, in as much as you are a member of parliament, you can't just get up and say, oh, I'm bringing you water, when maybe that's not what they actually want. And if you don't have the opinion leaders guiding you or you engaging them, you will just be thinking you are doing these projects, but then that is not what actually they want. Um, on During my tenure as a member of parliament within the last four years, I managed to secure 10 mechanized boreholes in 10 communities. Um, I felt like it was, I would say it's it's my first project as a member of parliament that I did within the constituency. I felt like water was life. And areas where after the engagement with them, I got to know that they had a challenge with water. I managed to to get that for them. Um, Another thing was also building um, um, educational infrastructure. I, I managed to build one ICT and library center at the Hira class of schools and then one three unit classroom block at Safo. Okay. Um, I wanted to enhance, you know, the educational system within the constituency. Apart from that, one other thing that I, I, I'm after I was voted for, I visited one of the senior high schools and then I realized that most of the students there are not from Quabri. I have six senior high schools within my constituency. But most of them are 
you know people from different constituencies so i engaged the um, um how to call the municipal education director who informed me that most of the students are not really performing when it comes to the bc mm-hmm. so what we did was i engaged them as to you know coming out with a plan on how we can ensure that the bc's students are able to come out with flying colors and attend these senior high schools and so they are mock they are master they are uh, i mean their teachers we had to and we had to had to invest in them yeah so that we could achieve that target apart from that we also did a lot of um, um teenage education on mm. drugs on teenage pregnancy and all that and because i was a board chair for national youth authority one thing that was very dear to my heart was a young people who love sports and so within my constituency we are constructing two astroteps yeah and um, one is at mount Pontin, good and stuff. then the other one is at Ehra. good stuff i'm sure we, you could list a lot of things that you've done congratulations yes, yes earlier yes. i wanted to mention that you're a proud old student of saint roses yes ah. yes <laughs> I, I needed to mention it because i know a lot of saint roses uh, girls are listening now, oh so i see there you go uh, <laughs> that's one of you there who's excelling uh, amazingly well um tell me though what's the biggest lesson life has taught you so far not to trust people not to trust people yeah that's quite an interesting lesson yes how did that come about <laughs> well you know in politics there is always say no i mean it's not just in politics in life there is this saying that no man is an island you definitely would will fall on someone for help. But then there are instances where, you know, something comes up and you are expecting, you know, let me let me use this example. Like maybe there's an opportunity um for a constituent of yours mm-hmm. and then you can't always be at the constituency. So you fall on someone to help you, you know, and I take that activity. And by the time you realize there's a U turn that oh this person has done this with it or you know, and at the end of the day you are not able to achieve your your, your purpose for, for doing that. Other things is people that you intend to help the most, truly from your heart, are people who tend to disappoint you the more. And so mm-hmm. I'll say I learned two lessons, not to trust people and don't expect too much from people. Would you say there's nobody that you trust? I would say yes. I don't, I don't trust anyone. You don't trust your father? No. <laughs> he himself would tell me he doesn't even trust me. You don't trust your father? There's nothing wrong with that. I only trust I, no, in I God. <laughs> I didn't say there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just surprised. <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, uh, he's human, I'm human. It's just like you not putting your faith in, 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 in human beings. Yeah. They can disappoint you. Do you trust your mother? No. <laughs> Why am I even asking? <laughs> 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 Are you seeing somebody? Um, seeing in terms, of, I'm seeing you right now. So. Hey, sister, 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 dear So seeing, <laughs> seeing in terms of. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> this is not seeing is believing. Oh. <laughs> what, what I mean is, do you have a partner? Are you in a relationship? I know you're not married. No, I'm not. Yes, but are you in a relationship? Um. Uh, searching. <laughs> is it? Yes, I'm not even. I'm not supposed to be the one searching, so I'm waiting. Okay, you are waiting. <laughs> so what are you waiting for? What characteristics are you waiting for? Um, I, I mean, if you had a partner, I was going to ask whether you trust them, but obviously you don't. No. So now that you don't, <laughs> <laughs> whoever is coming, know that you won't be trusted. That's what starts. <laughs> but what kind? What kind of man are you waiting for? What's your kind of man? Um. I'm I'm not really particular with um, those features like I want a tall guy, I want a fair guy, or that skin. Uh, mm. That's not really something that I'm looking for. Um, and probably what I what I'm expecting from the person is the person being God fearing. Okay. That's all. And with that kind of feature, it takes time for you to get know. To God. Yeah. God get fearing. to know. So it's a God fearing ones. No, I'm on dosun. Oh, they be, they be, they be, oh, ho. 
<laughs> we have some there, you know. <laughs> so, I see. Uh, no, but if you okay, so let's say we check the God fearing box and whatnot. I mean, you, you probably would slightly have a preference for <laughs> maybe it's all that. Oh no, know. I'm I'm not really particular with about that. that it's yeah. it's all about the heart, you know. Yeah. But but what, why do you think it's taking long for them to come? Is it because of where you sit? Do you think it plays a role? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. It's about, I, I always say it's about how you carry yourself. You know, if you are all bossy, all rude, you know, you don't smile. Mm. I mean, definitely you don't expect people to, to walk to you. Because the person yeah. would definitely feel like, hey, what if I'm coming, you know, maybe I can't, why are you crying? No, I call embarrassing yeah. me, those kind of things. But then I'm free, I'm open, I'm, I'm, I'm lovely, so... But and they still don't come. Why? I do get a lot of um, um, proposals. Ah, people. so you are the one who's turning <laughs> them down. <laughs> because I'm still oh. looking for the God fearing one. <laughs> hey. <laughs> any better for? Oh, any che, any che. Almost bad, and you are turning them down. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's you know you should you in you have to you know think twice. Think about the good and the bad. Wow. What if the person is coming in with a bad motive? Mm. Um, what if the person has been sent? Um, what if the person just wants something from you? You know, all those questions run you through my You really mind. have trust issues. My goodness. I do, honest. I think that's... <laughs> I, o I always pray to God to, you know, yeah. be a bit relaxed yeah. on me with, with trust. I, I, and I think I, I got all these things from politics. Okay, you know, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm beginning to, to, to fear human beings more yeah. now. You know, I'm extremely careful now. Yeah. Um, I'm always very petty with, uh, yeah. you know, because... Would you, would you say in that vein that politics has done you some harm? No, I, I'm, I, that has really rather strengthened me. Because if it was those days, I would have just, you know, probably going for that. But then... Politics has taught me a lot of experience mm -hmm. um, in the game, and uh, that's that's what I'm also, you know, falling on to yeah. to to better my life. What's your biggest fear? <laughs> wow, my biggest fear. My biggest fear will be probably not to be able to make any meaningful contribution in my constituency. I always tell them. Um, that when I'm no more a member of parliament, I want them to keep mentioning my name, that Francisca Ote Mensa was the one who came to do this. She was an MP who was humbled. She was an MP who loved all. She was an MP who brought a lot of infrastructure within the constituency. And so if I'm not able to do that, that means I couldn't leave a legacy. Mm. And with all the sacrifices I had to give, for for this job and i i live without making any any impact that will be my biggest fear i got a message from nana Kia crunches sampa in dc who says francisca is an intelligent lady by all standards proud okay. rosa <laughs> and achu tete in japan says your guest is such an inspiration q is being taken from her uh, i've got some very interesting messages coming uh, your way um, this is from Clement who says, Clement, this is one of the top inspirational interviews ever had on your show. Tell Francisca she's just an inspiration to the many from deprived homes. Perseverance is her key to success plus the family. Tell her I've come to love her the more. That's from Clement. Clement, thank you so much um, uh, as well for your message. Um, and, and there are a lot of people who are sending you messages to say they are God-fearing. <laughs> <laughs> Lexus, please tell on Robert that I'm God-fearing. <laughs> this one says, Lexus, I'm a pastor. I'm very oh. God-fearing. <laughs> so now we, we need to... I think at this point, you all need to bring the applications through Lexus Bill. Exactly. I will test the level of your... God-fearing. <laughs> Dominic says, I love today's show, Lexus. Uh, Francisca was my mate at KNUSC. She's doing so well. Kudos to mm. her. May the Almighty continue to use her to imprint his love onto humanity. I really want to link up with her to discuss some vital issues. Mm. All right. Now, the president just released his nominees for ministers. Have you seen the list? Yes, I have. Any surprises? No, I'm not. 
You're not surprised. No, I'm. I'm not. Um, you know, um, MPP is a party where we say we have the men, mm. and um, the only maybe surprising thing I would say is um, some ministers who were part of the first administration couldn't find their names mm. in the. Uh, which one? Which name surprised you that was absent? Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working with the uh, uh, Ministry of Youth and Sport because I'm the board chair for National Youth Authority. And so my boss is Onabu Isaac Esiyama. And You're surprised you didn't see him? Yes, I mean, I, I worked with him for yeah. four years. and. You think he deserved to, to be in this government? It's not about me. Yeah, but what do you think? Um, what I think is the president in his own wisdom thought it right. Yeah. Yes, and I mean, he, he, he definitely may have done a lot of um, engagement, a lot of... Um, you know, he would definitely seek a lot of views before he could come out with mm. this list. So, if the president wanted doubt, you to serve in his government, which of the ministries would you rather? I'll leave that to him. Which would you rather? It's like I said, it's not about me. You don't have any preference. It's it's not about me, seriously. Okay. It's about the president. If Yeb says Francisca is amazing, Lexis, ask her what's her local name. Uh, <laughs> I'm Mami Sewa. All right. Everybody calls me that. It's been so amazing <laughs> spending time with you, Mami Sewa. I've enjoyed it, and unfortunately, time has run out. But finally, though, if you had to advise mm. anybody who looks up to you, what would you tell them? Hmm. You know, recently I was reading something on Facebook, and um, I've forgotten the guy's name. He was like, all those motivational speakers should stop advising us. They should give us the. They should link us to the helpers who help them, and the only helper that helped me is God. Mm. And so I will link them to God. They should be. They should trust God more. One thing I've I've learned to 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 believe in in politics is, if you're a Christian, you're a Christian. If you, you want to go the other way, you should go the other way. But then if you intend to mess it up. That is when you have a difficulty. Mm. So I leave them God. They should believe in God. Then and then, they should they should have a life a lifeline. You sh you should plan your life. Don't say you are waiting for someone. Mm. You don't know how long you are going to spend on this earth. I always say I don't know how long I'm going to live on this earth. So whatever I have to do, I wouldn't wait. And so whatever you have to do, you don't have to wait. Don't say oh I'm too young. How can I start my business? I'm too young, um, compa uh, combining maybe um, um, a child and then going to school is difficult. I combine my campaign and then going to school, and here I am. So don't say, every, uh, don't, don't demean yourself. Always believe that you get there, and definitely God will strengthen you to, to get there. She's a go-getter. Mami sewa medasi. It's been great spending time with you. You need to come to Kumasi. I need to. I told you, you I spent some to. time in Kumasi. Yes. And we need to go back. We need to. Because Bantuman confidence is waiting. <laughs> <laughs> or probably some fufu in your constituency. Oh, don't worry. I'm not taking you. I'll take you to the house. Awesome. I'll give you house fufu. That oh one is better. Oh, my God. Can't wait. <laughs> Thank you so much. Francis Cotting Mensa is member of parliament for Quabri East constituency. It's been a great time with her on personality profile. My name is Lexus Bill. Thanks a lot to my team. Adam Naitia, Philip Naya, Biku Sankofisa, Onofori, Anita, Mirabel, and of course to Halifax, Joseph as well, who's been very instrumental. Um, the news is coming up next, and Uncle Ken will take over the radio. Uncle Ken.